Hello guys, I would like to welcome you to another episode in the, of Networking in the Cloud, where I would just like to show something very interesting, as you can see on, the, on my screen already. And, uh, and I just want to, I was working on this with a colleague of mine, and you know, we just want to try to achieve this. So I decided to work on it. I did not do the drawing, he did, but you know, I just changed a couple of network addresses there so that I can, you know, make it work. But after it's working, I, I discovered I can I can just throw this out there for other people to benefit from. And you know, there might be other people, other guys that are struggling with this kind of setup. And by the time I explain, you will understand what I meant. So and uh yeah, that's why I'm doing this video to show us and in case you're wondering why i'm looking at the other screen is because i have my lab set up in the other screen and my camera is in the one just before me it does nothing so any, anyway i'm not the one to be focused on it's the lab so it, I, it doesn't really matter that i look sideways so let's look at what i have here so basically what we're trying to achieve is to send traffic to a firewall uh, appliance or you know you might have a firewall appliance that you want to inspect traffic before it goes to the destination and in this in this um, lab I'm, I'm i'm using the aws network firewall you can have your own firewall appliance there and in that sense you will probably be looking at you know, turning up appliance mode with transit gateway, but that's not what I'm doing today. I just want to make things easy and to make use of AWS services to manage everything for me. So basically what we, what I want to achieve and I want to look at is that we want Spoke VPC hey, to be able to talk to the on-premise down here, but not directly, it has to go to the inspection VPCs to be inspection inspected so after after the inspection is done then it can decide to see based on the rule that has been configured do i allow you to go or not and at the same time i don't want vpc a to talk to vpc b and if you know i want the the the, the inspection vpcs to be able to decide that and if I have multiple VPCs, this is what I want to do. I may have another VPC here and I want, I don't want Spoke VPC here to talk to Spoke VPC B, but I want VPC here to talk to the third VPC. Everything has to be decided in the inspection VPC. And basically this is what I have. Ignore this one, just forget about that. So I will be working us through what I, what I have set up and to see how it's been done. So I know this is a video, so you can always, uh, you know, go back, maybe you take a screenshot of this video, of this lab, so you can always refer back to it when you're watching the video. So I'll just walk us through that real quick to let us see what I have in, in here without wasting much time. So this is what I have, I have in my VPC, I have my VPC, so I use, an, I use Island region, for this uh for the vpc and i use uh canada region for the on-premise so i have the inspection vpc here i have my uh, spoke vpc here spoke vpc b so basically what i just need to do is to let's take it one by one the tech vpc here i have my subnet here created for that so just I try to name them. The ones that don't have name are the different VPC, which I don't use. So I have the private VPC A. This is a private VPC A from the tech, tech VPC A. So in my route table, you can see I have, this is the default route table, and this is the, uh, the, the local CIDR, and I have a default route pointing to the TGW. That makes sense, right? So I have, uh, the public VPC is just for me to log on to the uh, to a public instance so I can then log into the private instance. So that's this the purpose of the, the pub VPC, the public VPC A. So if you look at the, the private VPC B, that's the spoke VPC B, you see that the same thing I have is just the side of changes instead of 10 is 20. The default also points to this, just as you saw in the diagram, I have a default pointing to the inspection VPC. So that's me, that's that for that. Uh, 
so if we go back to the route table, I have my route table for tech VPC here, private route table. And what I have here is that just the same thing. I have these, I have this point into the, yeah, so I already showed, showed us that in the, in the subnet. So yeah, still the same thing. I showed us that in the subnet, so that's good. So let's just move on in the VPC. Uh, if we look at the inspection VPC, so this is what I have for the CIDR. I have this for my CIDR, as you can see in the diagram. And for the subnet, this is where I want you to pay very good attention. Uh, I have firewall subnets and I have firewall TGW subnets. So the firewall subnet, I put it in in AZB, US West B, and the TGW, I put it in AZH. Now, I know there's a lot of questions going on in your mind uh, for, for, for an Xbox, uh, for a networking expert, you probably have a thousand of questions like, okay, what about for redundancy? But, you know, I don't really want to waste much of time. I would like to go deep into that, but, you know, if I can, I will talk about that. But this is what just I have now. I have the firewall VPC subnet and I have the firewall TGW subnet. Now, why do I have this like this? Because when I'm creating an attachment for my firewall VPC, I want to only select one single subnet. And that is going to be my TGW subnet because of the way I'm going to be manipulating the route, the TGW route table. And that's why I have it like that. I hope you flow with me and understand what is going on. So, but let's move on. So in this VPC, let's just look at the VPC TGW subnet first. If I look at the route table, this is what I have. I have the defaults sending to the firewall. Now, maybe when I'm explaining, you'll get a gist. When traffic is coming, let me just bring that up again. When traffic is coming from spoke VPC, let's say I want to talk to on-premise. Traffic is coming from here. It gets into the TGW, TGW uh, ID or router, as it were. It looks at the route table. The first thing is that this looks at its own route table. I need to get to the on-premise. On-premise, I have 172.16.3.0. But because I specify default, it sends this to, this, to, the, to the inspection VPC, right? So when the inspection VPC gets it, because it's going to the attachment of the inspector VPC, and the inspector VPC is associated here, yeah, is it, when when that gets it, it goes into the inspection VPC route table domain. So when that gets it, it looks at it. It says, okay, I have a route coming from 10.10 .10 going to on-premise. What do I have in my route table? I have default going to VPC firewall. So let's go further, keep that in mind. So when that happens, so that's why this is exactly what you see here. So when it happens, let me just talk about this. In the VPC subnet, this is what I have. I have a default going to an ENI. With that also in one hand, I will explain that. So I think that's basically that the part of the VPC. So if we look at it, the, the, the transit gateway, I have a transit gateway created. I intentionally disabled default association route table and default propagation route table. I disabled them because I want to control how I do the propagation and the association. So the attachment, I have this attachment for the spoke K, spoke beam, special VPC, and this is for the VPN. So for the TGW route table, I have the firewall route table, the on-premise route table, the spoke route table. For the spoke route table, this is where I associated both spokes VPC. This is where I'm going to associate all the VPCs if I have more than two. And the on-premise, this is where I will associate the VPN because you know that's the on-premise, right? The firewall, this is where I, I, I will associate the firewall VPC. But to get interesting, if you look at the routes now in the propagation, I'm not doing any propagation. I want to manage that myself. So what I do here is that I'm only I'm only creating a static route towards the firewall VPC. 
because like I explained, when the traffic comes from the spoke VPC, it gets into the VPC route table of the spoke. It looks at it, it says that, okay, there's a different route going to the transit gateway. Now it enters because I associated the spoke route table with this spoke route table in the TGW route table. It knows that it needs to go into this route table. Then it looks at the route. Oh, well, how, how, how do I route this? It goes to the firewall. Now, let's talk about the firewall. When the firewall gets it, I have a firewall that is created with inspection firewall. I have a policy that is created with a G policy. And under the policy, I have something called inspection rule. So in the inspection rule, I have I've defined a set of rules for the IP. And this is where I, I did, the, you know, you're going to do the magic that says source from spoke A going to spoke B. I don't even care what any direction, just drop it. And then I put another, another rule that says coming from the source going to on premise. I want to pass, you know, you know, the reason why I did a different card with the on premise is that you might want to control internet traffic. You want your internet to go through on premise. You want to see what's going on. You want to monitor what you know things uh the internet traffic is so uh, so let's say the internet router and the on-premise is this and it's in this subnet so i said pass so you can see that right so that makes a lot of sense and uh so it goes into that so where was i ba, 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 ba. <laughs> i can't remember where it was oh okay i think i remember that so transit gateway route table so when it comes to this, it says send it to the firewall. So the firewall picks it based on the rule because I'm going to the on-premise. As you can see, the second rule says pass. So when it passes, it it goes to the on-premise. And if I bring out that diagram, it goes to the, it says, you know, it says, it says goes to the firewall, right? When the firewall gets it, uh -huh. good. The firewall submits. Yo, this is, I hope somebody is not getting confused already. So when I was creating an attachment for the firewall, if you is getting confused, you might just want to go over the video again to, to get it. And if it's more confusing, just send me an uh, a message, just ask a question, put a comment, let me know what's, what's confusing and I can explain for that in the comment section. So when I was creating the firewall submit, the firewall attachments, this is what I did. See, I only have one subnet selected. I didn't choose to, you know, I have two subnets in the, in the inspection firewall, but I only, create, I only created one because as you can see, there's a TGW firewall submit and there's a TG, there's a, a firewall TGW submit and there's a firewall VPC submit. So because when traffic is coming into the firewall, like you can see in the transit gateway attachment where I directed or default into the firewall, it comes into the TGW subnet. So when it gets there, it looks at the rules and the rules says, you know, we'll send it out. So there is going to be sent out. The, when, when I created the firewall, I associated the uh, the the second subnet with it, which is the VPC subnet. If you look at the firewall details here, you see in my in my in my in my in my subnet for the firewall for the inspection VPC, I had two subnets: US West one A and one B. I used the one A to be the TGW subnet for the firewall. Then the one B is the firewall subnet. So when the one A checks the traffic that comes into the TGW domain. It looks at it, it sends it to the firewall, the firewall picks it. And because as you can see, I'm only associating this with the firewall. So the firewall looks at it, it sends it, it sends the traffic back after inspecting and deciding what to do with it. Now I'm passing the traffic. It sends it into this firewall subnet. Now you might be thinking here that oh what about if uh, you know I need I need redundancy what 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 happen if this AC has an issue that's why in this particular VPC there are three AZs so I can decide to use US US uh, not US EU West one C as the second AZ and then you know 
I can then do the same thing here so that in case if this, you know, you can you can do that. I don't want to go into the details. I'm trying to make the video short. So you can you can you get the gist of it. So but now let's just flow with it so that you know once you get this working, you can always manipulate and do some other tweaks, some fail failover redundancy as you wish. So when this gets it, this needs to then look at the is routing logic to see what, what else it needs to do. And that's where it gets interesting. So when it gets it, let's look at what I've configured with this subnet to do with it. So if we go back to my subnet, uh, to AAE, this is exactly what the subnet is. My route table says, send it to an ENI. Why an ENI? Why not a GWID? Now, this ENI is actually the, the TGW, the firewall TGW subnet that was created when I, when I, now if you look at this ENI, just bear with me, the attachment, I created this, I use one subnet. When a subnet is, when an, when an attachment is created on a TGW, what, what AWS did behind the scene is to create an ENI for you. So an ENI is created if I, if I selected two subnets. I'm going to have two ENIs, but because it's one subnet, I have one ENI. So what I need to do in this subnet, with this subnet, with this subnet is to select the E because I don't have any TGW created, a TGW ENI created within this subnet. So I have to reference the ENI of the of my 1A subnet. If I decided to put a TGW ID there, it's going to fail. The traffic is not going to work. So this is how you do it. So that's why, you know, AWS advised that when you're creating your attachment, you select all the subnets so that the ENS can be created and, you know, there's no cross traffic. Uh, as it is now, the traffic from the US 1A is going to be, from this US 1, 1B is going to send to US 1A. So there's going to be inter you know, traffic there and, you know, there might be, I can't remember now if there's a cost attached to, to, to that, but, you know, that's just the gist, but because of what we are trying to do, we want to make sure that there's no loop with the traffic and the traffic has a proper path to, to go. And that is exactly why I have this here. So this is going to go to the ENI and by the time it gets to the, to the ENI uh, IP, it's going to then forward that out because it's going to, this is the TGW, right? So when it gets to the TGW, this is what it's going to do. So let's look at the TGW route table. When it gets to the TGW route table, because it's going to be in the in the firewall, in the firewall route table. Yeah, the firewall route table associated with this inspection frequency. Because I'm I'm trying to go to the on-premise, right? I already have a route here towards the VPN. Now this is propagated because I propagated the VPN into the firewall. I could have not, I could have decided not to propagate it and just create a static route towards that. But yeah, that still works. So it's propagated and that's why I can reach you on premise. Now, if, yeah, basically, so let me just uh, explain the, the propagation and the association part of this of this uh, transit of this transit gateway. So, if you look at let's start from spoke VPC, I uh, spoke yeah VPC route table. So, if you look at this, I only have because I wanted to route all the traffic default to the VPC, to the inspection VPC. That's why I have it here. The on premise, I'm only associating VPN to it. But when you look at my routes, um, I created a static route. I created the the spoke one and the spoke two. Why? Because this is where the VPN is associated, right? So when when the VPN is associated to this, any routes I I put here or I propagated here would be advertised over the BGP over BGP or over my static route towards the on-premise device. Because if you look at my side-to-side -side VPN, what I'm doing is I'm doing a BGP. Uh, uh, configuration and I have both tunnels up. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm 
um, originating in a different route. Yeah, I'm, I was looking for that word. I'm originating in a different route, that's why I have just one route. So, so if you look at this, that is exactly what, so I need to let my on-premise know about this book VPC because so that if the on-premise needs to get to them, it knows how to get to them. So that's why I have it here. I don't need, even though this is associated to the VPN, I don't need to have my VPN showed, showed up here because I'm not trying to reach myself, right? So there's no point. So in the firewall route table, if you look at I associated the firewall VPC here and the route, yeah, I have this there and I also have both of them because the firewall route table needs to know about them because it's the one making the decision whether to allow uh, them to talk to 20 or to block them. And he also needs to have a, a it also needs to have a route to the on-premise because when, when when it gets when when it makes its decision after you send your spoke to you know your spoke A is trying to put on to the on-premise, it gets to the firewall and the firewall makes the decision. It needs to send it out towards the on-premise. So it needs to know about the on-premise route, which is a default. So it sent it there. And that's how everything is. I hope I've not been I hope I've not taken so much of your time and I hope I wasn't too fast in explaining this. So basically that's how you achieve and before before I go, let me just you know test this. And if you look at what I have here, this is exactly what I have. I have my okay, so if I say let me so let me just quickly show us this is the on prem. So if you see show IP BGP. So you see this is what I have here. I have both of the uh, spoke VPC being advertised to the on premise. And uh, yeah, just let me show you, I have this as my on-premise and I have a laptop, you know, <laughs> just running. And this is behind, if you look at the IP address, this is 3.77. This is facing, uh, this is facing my, is behind my CSR, Cisco CSR. So if you see me try to reach that, you know that. And if you see show IP in the face brief, you'll see that I have these. Uh, it's in the same subnet as that 77. So if I try to reach 172.16.3.77, see this is reachable. I can reach that. This is working. And even if I try to reach it three, which is the interface, you see that is working, but let's try to reach uh, 10, that's 20, that's one, that's for four. And that is, if you look at my instance, you see that this is the tech B and you see 10 to 20, that's one, that's for four. If I try to reach that, this would not work. You see, so that's how you isolate because what I have in my, if you look at my firewall, I have that policy that says, do allow that to work. And that's why I have the inspection rule that says, prop this, but allow this. And, you know, and if you want to, you can even, I deleted this one. So, so this is not still working. So this is inspection good. This is what I'm using. So I just want to show something real quick. So in case you want to also monitor, you can monitor this way and you see, yeah, you see this is, you can see state packet dropped. <laughs> I was trying to point there, but you guys would see that. So you can see the number of packet go 586, you know, packet has been dropped, it will show you the state for receive, you know, um, you know, this is how you just monitor. And I think that's it. And if I try to reach from the on-premise to uh, one of the spoke VPC, that is 10, that's one, that's two to six. If I source it from 172, that's 16, that's three, that's 83. I say that works. Even if I say from 
So wait, it's not a valid IP. I should have tried from the laptop, but yeah, you get a gist. It should be from 83. And uh, if I try to go to 144, the second one, this just shows us that it's working. And basically that's just what I want to show you. I hope this makes sense. And if you look at that, this is exactly what I try to achieve. Make sure that spoke A does the kind of talk to spoke B, but can talk to uh, on-premise by using the inspection VPC to do that. And I hope this makes a lot of sense to you. I hope you like it, uh, you know, like the video. Feel free to, to leave your comments on what you think. Or if there's any further questions you need to ask some clarification, I will be happy to answer you. All right. Thank you and have a beautiful day. Don't forget to subscribe if you're a newcomer and if you're an existing member. Well done. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.